Hey, how are you guys? Okay. We're on. As usual, we'll wait a few more minutes before people show up. Trusting the Lord Jesus will just wash me clean of all my filth, purify me in the holy blood of Jesus Christ, sanctified by the Spirit. In Jesus' almighty name, Yahovah, Father, Son, Spirit. Thank you, Andrew. I'm trying. I'm trying to lose this weight, get my health back, become that handsome Assyrian beast in Jesus' name, and use it to glorify Jesus Christ. But good to see you, bro. Did you listen to yesterday's uh, session? Did you listen to yesterday's session? Keep praying. I'm almost there. I'm almost at my goal. I got 50 to go. I still have love handles. It's like hard to get rid of them, but I know I will get rid of them, keep them off, get my health back. But more importantly, pray that I can be holy and pure and in love with Jesus and walking in obedience, right? This flesh, constant struggle. I'm already double B. Ria, stop hating. Joshua Sliwa. How are you, brother? Yes, I know the topic. I hope it's still of interest to you. I, I'm going to get back to, is Jesus the Archangel Michael? And we'll go into other topics by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. But I did want to finish the topic I began yesterday. I didn't have enough time to fill, finish the biblical basis for Sola Scriptura. Right? So we're going to wait a few more minutes. And I'm hoping a particular individual shows up who thinks he's logical and presented what he thinks is an irrefutable logical argument against Sola Scriptura. I'm hoping he shows up by the grace of Jesus Christ because I'm going to embarrass him with his logic and show him how his logic proves too much and proves that his church is a false church. Thank you, Abraham. So we'll see if he shows up. If you're not, that's fine. So, and we'll continue. All right. Good to see so many familiar faces, and hopefully we'll get the regular. And I'm praying in time, if I keep doing this by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, it'll increase, right? For his glory, for his honor, for his praise, not for self-glorification. May God save me from that, save me from my flesh, save me from myself, save me from this wicked, evil, corrupt system. Save my daughters for the glory of Jesus Christ. I pray the Father will save my daughters for the glory of Jesus Christ. That the Lord Jesus will save them, the Holy Spirit will see them in Jesus' name. Yeah, pretty much so. My sight is not what it used to be. Revelation 22, 13, good to see you. We're going to start in a few minutes. If you guys want to ask me a question to warm me up, feel free to ask. You need to know what number. Angela's complications. We're a year younger. St. Dennis, come on, brother. You're, you're going to kill me eventually. You're going to be one of the people that will cause me to die. You see the title. Any topic? So you don't read the title, Sola Scriptura, Justification, Christian, Shema, Part 2? I don't know, Alex Glass, should I? But Zarina, you don't have to wake up tomorrow, so you can stay late and sleep in. Right. Hey, Zarina, what can I feel Renee, Renee, they're in love with you. Renee, Renee, they're in love with you. I'm just make up songs as I go along. What's that song? It's not Renee. It's uh, how does that song go? You guys remember? Denise, Denise, I'm in love with you. Denise, Denise, I'm in love with you. Denise, I'm in love with you. Wow, 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 wow. You gotta admit, man, I am looking pretty handsome. How can anyone resist me? Arrgh! No, Pedro, Job is an immoral book. <laughs> what kind of question? I love I love my Christian brother sister. Some of the questions. Is Job a moral book? No, it's an immoral book. Uh, Joseph, I, you don't want to use that stupid argument because you're going to embarrass yourself. I know that's one of the pathetic Catholic arguments, and I'm going to turn it against you. Joseph, are you ready to be used as my pawn and my guinea pig? Because I was hoping someone would be stupid enough to use that argument. Are you ready, Joseph? And you're going to have to answer questions directly. Because I'm going to unpack what's implicit in your question, which is not a sincere question. 
because you think you're going to catch us. Are you ready, Joseph, so I can use you as my guinea pig? Oh, sorry, Joseph. I love you, man. Joseph, can you forgive me? Because I was waiting for someone who used a similar argument earlier to show up, and I thought it was you. I love you, Joseph. Can you forgive me and don't stone me? That's what happens when you assume, Joseph. I make a bring ass out of me and me. <laughs> so if you're a Protestant, sorry about that. Yeah. Let me, let me bring up a problem for those who want to use the argument that for you to have a sola scriptura, scriptura, you have to know the canon, which is true. I mean, without a canon, then you can't function, right? Sola scriptura won't work. But those who ask the question typically ask that question in order to show the person that you need their church because it's their church that determined the canon. Without their church, you wouldn't have a canon. And if you wouldn't have a canon, you couldn't function with Sola Scriptura, right? You understand the argument? And I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to fill me and protect me from error for the glory of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray in a minute. Okay, now let me tell you the problem with that. Even if that argument was sound and valid, it's not. And I'll explain to you in a minute why. That still doesn't solve the problem. That actually pushes the problem one step back. Because how do you know that your church is that church that God used to bring about the canon? How do you know that your church is that church that God used to bring about the canon? And secondly, because I was hoping the gentleman would come here. I don't want to make his argument for him. Because a gentleman used an argument, and I'm hoping he shows up so I can then use him as a guinea pig. Right? Guinea pig. To show why a person should never use such arguments, right? But anyway, the whole point is, for example, we have Orthodox here, and we have Roman Catholics here, and we have Coptics here, and we have Nestorians here, and we have Protestants here, right? And again, let me say for the record, we have beautiful, born-again, spirit-filled believers by the grace of Jesus Christ in every major branch of Christianity, and we have jerks, we have lowlifes, we have thugs in every major branch of Christianity that give their particular church a bad name. And I'm sure many people think that of me, that because I'm very nasty and in your face and I don't pull punches, that I'm, I'm a bad representative of my tradition. Okay, the Lord Jesus forgive me, sanctify me by his spirit, right? What I can't stand is when one of those jerks, arrogant snots who think they know it all, tries to use an argument that he or she thinks is going to stump me, right? And this jerk tried to use that argument to try to stump me. But he doesn't know if he shows up and if he identifies himself. What did I use? The T word, jerk. Okay. Then I would use him as a guinea pig and demonstrate that his logic proves too much and will end up embarrassing himself. No, tradition is not... You know, a bad word. There's good tradition and bad tradition. There's good tradition that the Bible praises and bad tradition that the Bible says shun. I don't know. But anyway, for example, here, Joseph. Joseph, here. God infallibly knows the canon that he produced. See, here you go. Alan Rule, he's, he, here's a guy that's a credit to his tradition. I love this guy. I, I consider him a brother in Christ. And because he's quite intelligent, he doesn't use these foolish arguments. But like I said, in every tradition, you have jerks that give a bad name, you know, and badly represent their particular tradition, right? Alan Ruhul is one of those who's a credit to his tradition. And our sister Nada, from the way she behaves herself here and conducts herself, she's a credit to her tradition, right? They present themselves in a manner that <clears throat> makes their particular tradition, their church, look good. Their credit to their tradition, to their particular church. But then you have jerks from every major branch of Christianity. Like I said, many people think that I am one of those jerks, jerks who is not a credit to my particular tradition. No, I don't blame you. I can be a jerk, right? Because I'm one of those guys who will get, in, get into the mud, stoop 
into the mud, mud and answer a fool according to his folly. But anyway, I don't know if Joseph is here because I wanted to ask him. I don't know, but I guess he left. He, he did a hit and run. I'm a Protestant and he took off because he just wanted to come protest because he's a Protestant and take off. Exactly, 1611, I'll always be your jerk. And there's even a bigger jerk here that makes me look humble and mild. Sahi Christian makes me look so, so humble, you think I'm a choir boy. Okay, Joseph, God has infallible knowledge of the canon of Scripture, meaning he knows every book he's produced and inspired to be part of the canon. <clears throat> now, God works in and through Christians and guides them in such a way to discover the canon that God has produced, the canon of Scripture that is infallible. But however, the way God has done that, he has left open some disputes and disagreements. And I see the wisdom of God in allowing that to sharpen us, to study the issue of the canon, to go deep into history so that we can study this with greater depth and have greater understanding and clarity. Are you with me there? In other words, here's what I'm trying to say. And I pray the Holy Spirit will anoint my mouth and fill me with wisdom to say it clearly, accurately for the glory of Jesus and save me from error. There are a lot of things that God doesn't come out and just spell it out in black and white. There's a lot of things that God doesn't just come out and settle it for us. There are things in which God allows differences and controversy and disputes because through those disputes in his wisdom, he will use to sharpen us, to challenge each other, to dig deeper into history and into the scriptures in order to acquire greater wisdom, knowledge, and clarity. Are you with me there? Are you with me there? I want to make sure you're understanding me. This is where I need your undivided attention for the glory of Jesus Christ. Not for self-glorification, not because I want you to give me attention. I want you to give me attention for the sake of glorifying Jesus Christ and praising Jesus Christ. Now, let me prove that to you from Scripture, what I just said. God in his perfect wisdom has allowed divisions, differences, and controversies among the members of the body of Jesus Christ. It is part of God's wisdom that there would be divisions among us, even though it's what I call a necessary evil. God hates division, but has tolerated and allowed division. Are you with me there? Now, do you want me to give you the biblical basis for what I just said? 1 Corinthians 11, 17 to 19. Now, before you post it, let's enter the presence of our God by the grace of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, and asking him to bless. Father, we love you. We praise you. We magnify you, Father. I cannot come before you and enter your presence apart from the holy blood of Jesus, washing me and being my covering. Father, please wash us in the blood of Jesus. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Forgive me for failing you and succumbing to the flesh, Father. We ask that by the fire of your Holy Spirit, you'll destroy our flesh and remove the fruit of our flesh and empower us to crucify the flesh and walk in the victory of the cross of Jesus and the power of your spirit, and please have mercy on us, Father. And be patient with us, Father, for the sake of Jesus. And give me the grace to be patient with my brothers and sisters in Christ, as I desire that you're patient with me. Father, have your way. Anoint this session with wisdom and power and knowledge from your Holy Spirit. Enable me to recall the passages and interpret them correctly by the power of your spirit for the glory of Jesus and not for the praise of men. Protect me from stammering and confusion. And fill my lungs and my chest and throat with the breath of life, the health I need to glorify you, Father. And bless your people here. Fill them with your spirit. Clothe them with your spirit. Seal them by your spirit. And cover us with the blood of Jesus. And wash us in the blood of Jesus. And wash our loved ones. My daughters, wash them in the blood of Jesus. And seal them by your spirit. Please, Abba. Please, Lord Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit. And please, Father, I ask for this grace, for a blessing tomorrow. Tomorrow is my 47th birthday. Father, please make it a special day. Bless me, Father. And you know the desires of my heart, what I ask. Bless everyone present here. Use me to bless them and love them and serve them for the sake of Jesus. And save us from the attacks of the enemy. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Take over the session. Have your way in Jesus' name.
Yep, tomorrow I'll be 47. Now, I do accept blank checks and gift cards, and I'll even accept them late. So if you miss giving me a blank check or a gift card tomorrow, don't worry. You got till next year to send it. So you got another 364 days. Keep sending them. But all, you know, joking aside, keep praying. Financially, God will raise up people to partner with me to be fully funded to glorify Jesus Christ. Okay, now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 11, 17 to 19, and pray for anointing that I can handle this topic with care and reverence and not misinterpret Scripture, right? In Jesus' name. Yes, if I can cash Monopoly money at Walmart, yes. Okay, now read with me, folks. Focus on the Word of God, because when you read the Word of God, that's God's voice speaking to you. So let's focus and be attentive to the voice of our God. Now, in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you. The same location, same body of believers at Corinth, and they're divided. And I partly believe it. Now notice why he partly believes it. Guys, read verse 19. Partly believe it. Read verse 19. For there must be also heresies among you. Look, Paul says there must be heresies, right? The word her heretikos means to choose, to choose, right? In this context, theological means to choose contrary to the truth of God. There must be also heresies among you that they which are proved may be made manifest among you. Wow, did you catch what Paul said? In God's perfect wisdom, he allows this necessary evil. He tolerates this necessary evil of divisions and heresies because God is going to use the differences, the divisions and heresies to force Christians, the body of Christ, to dig deeper into the word, deeper into history, to seek his face more passionately through prayer and fasting to find the answer and solution. Are you with me there? Pray for our brother Andrew Martin. He's at the door. It's a matter of time he returns to the feet of Jesus. Now, Lewis says two. I hope he's not mocking because he's going to get blo blocked. Why is it a two? Why don't you understand? Okay. Now, you will find this to be the case in the air, air, area, area, in Jesus' name, area of the canon. The canon of Scripture, apart from the New Testament, the canon of Scripture apart from the New Testament, meaning all the major branches of Christianity, the Orthodox Church, the Coptic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, the Protestants, except the 27 books of the New Testament, right? The dispute really centers around the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures. Now, let me show you the commonality where we agree, because when we talk about the differences, sometimes... The impression may be that the canons are so different that this somehow would suggest the different canons result in different theologies, different perspe perspectives, and in disunity. However, I want you to remember this. For the most part, all the major branches of Christianity, meaning Roman Catholicism and its va various flavors, the Orthodox, and their various flavors, the Coptic, the Protestants, all of us accept the 66 books of the Bible. The 39 Old Testament books, which the Jews accept, and the 27 books of the New Testament, we all are agreed upon. So I want you to understand, we all agree regarding the 66 books. Where we differ is in the area of the Old Testament, specifically those books called by Roman Catholics, the Deuterocanonicals, what Protestants call the Apocrypha. So understand, let's take the Roman Catholic canon. The Roman Catholic canon has 73 books, but the New Testament is identical to the New Testament that Protestants read, that the Orthodox read, that the Coptics read, that the Nestorian Church reads. So we're agreed on that. We also accept 39 Old Testament books. We hold that in common. The difference is when it comes to the Roman Catholic canon, they have what they call the deuterocanonical books, 
what we call the apocryphal books. So they include additional books and chapter chapters in Daniel, Jeremiah, like the letter Baruch, that Protestants reject. So for the most part, we're in agreement concerning the 66 books of the Bible. Are you with me there? Yes, the New Testament is the same for the Protestants, the Roman Catholic, the Orthodox, and the Coptic, right? You with me there? The disagreement, the disagreement has to do with what we call the Deuterocanonical and the Apocrypha. The Roman Catholics believe books such as Tobit, First and Second Maccabees, the Wisdom of Solomon, the Wisdom of Ben Sirach, right? Judith, these two are inspired scriptures of the old testament and they have also the greek version at least also has additional verses and chapters that go with daniel as well as the letter baruch are you with me there but i want you to see that we agree to the 66 books our destination is here you got it this is the guy he's going to be my guinea pig thank you for coming because now this gentleman unfortunately is not like alan ruhul He's one of those jerks that give a bad name to his denomination. So now I'm going to stoop to his level. I'm going to end up embarrassing him. So good he's here. Now, coming back to the issue, the Orthodox Church have even more books than the Roman Catholics. Are you aware of this? And this is something acknowledged by the Roman Catholics and even Muslims' irony of ironies. Did you know that? You don't believe me? This is Catholic Answers. Catholic Answers. Here in Catholic.com, I'm giving you the link. Work with me here. Remember, sometimes the Bible study won't be entertaining. It will be educational by the grace of God's Spirit, but not necessarily entertaining. No, it's okay, Destiny. You're unlike Alan Ruhul, who's a credit to the Roman Catholic Church, whom I love and respect. You're not like him, so I'm going to treat you as you deserve. I'm going to stoop to your level and embarrass you. Guys, I'm, apologi I'm apologizing in advance what I'm going to do to this guy because he thinks he's smart and logical. Watch what I'm going to do to this guy. Okay? So, Alan Rule, don't take it personally. This is not directed uh, to you. It's to this guy who gives your particular branch of Christianity a bad name, as you have jerks in every major branch of Christianity. Okay, now, watch here. Follow me. This is CatholicAnswers.com. Let me read it. Are you guys ready? Do Catholics and the Eastern Orthodox have the same canon of Scripture? Are you guys ready for the answer by CatholicAnswers.com, one of the leading Catholic apologetic ministries, even though there are Roman Catholics who don't necessarily endorse them or like them, right? I don't want to put words in Alan Ruhl's mouth, but I think he's one of them that's not too fond of this organization, right? But let's read. Are you with me there? Question. Do Catholics and Eastern Orthodox have the same canon of Scripture? Answer, no. The Eastern Orthodox have a slightly different canon of Scripture. Everything in the Catholic canon is included in the Eastern Orthodox canon, but they have some additional parts. They have 3rd and 4th Maccabees. Many of you don't know this. There are actually four books titled Maccabees. 1st and 2nd Maccabees, 3rd and 4th Maccabees. So the Orthodox include all four. The Orthodox also have Psalm 151, and they have the prayer of Manasseh in Chronicles, and they have First Estras, which is different from Ezra and Nehemiah. So let's count how many additional books the Orthodox have. Third and fourth Maccabees, Psalm 151, the prayer of Manasseh in Chronicles, First Estras. So that means in their Old Testament, they have... 51 books. The Roman Catholic have 46 books. Let me continue reading. The reason for this list is that while the New Testament canon was essentially universally agreed upon by the 4th century, minor variations in the Old Testament persisted through the Great Schism in 1054. Many of you may not know this. The Orthodox and Roman Catholic Church split in the 11th century in the year 1054. So now here's a Catholic apologetic website admitting that even up to the 11th century, 
they still hadn't decided on the exact canon of the Old Testament, which explains the differences. Are you with me here? Are you with me here? So now destination. Here's my question to you. Since you want to argue, guys, now leave me be to this. This I'm going to try to be Christ-like. To this gentleman who thinks he knows logic. His argument was the following. Now I'm going to have a field day with him. Let me repeat his argument. And this guy really. See, I have to control my flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I see such arguments because he thinks he's intelligent and he waxes eloquent. Notice his argument. Formal refutation of Sola Scriptura, which now I'm going to use to destroy his own belief in his infallible magisterium. Watch, I'm going to turn this against him. Formal refutation of Sola Scriptura. P1, X is a library of books. Pay attention to his logic. Watch what I'm going to do to this guy. Glory to Jesus, I have this recorded. P2, the infallibility of a library depends on its list. That premise is asserted he hasn't proven it, but I'm going to grant him that premise in order to dig him deeper into the hole that he's dug for himself. I'm going to now bury you in your hole, but premise two is not granted because I don't affirm it and you haven't proven it. You've asserted it without proof, but I'm going to embarrass you. Just wait. The infallibility of a library depends on its list. P3, X does not contain its list. P4, if X does not contain its list, X cannot contain its infallible list. P5, Sola Scriptura prohibits the attribution of an external infallible list to X. In other words, since Sola Scriptura does not allow you to appeal to an external authority that's infallible to determine its list of infallible books, conclusion, X is not infallible if Sola Scriptura is admitted. Now, you guys want to see how I'm going to bury this guy with his logic? Do you guys want to have fun now at this guy's expense? You guys ready? Are you guys ready now? We're now going to have fun at this guy's expense and embarrass him. My apologies to the rest of the Roman Catholics. Please don't take it personally. Okay, you just admit you're a Roman Catholic and you believe that your magisterium is infallible. Here's my question. How did you arrive at the conclusion that your church is infallible? Because now I'm going to assume your argument. In order for you to know that this church is infallible, you have to have infallible certainty. And the means that you use to arrive at that conclusion have to be infallible as well. You see how stupid I'm going to make you look right now? Let me repeat. Let me repeat. The only way you can know your church is infallible is if you have infallible certainty and the means through which you arrived at that conclusion are infallible. Okay. Now you see why this guy's a joke? You see why he's a joke? So now he arrived at the conclusion that his church is infallible through fallible inference, but he won't grant that for sola scriptura. In other words, for us to even know that the books are infallible, we have to have certainty that this list is infallible, but we can't have that certainty from Sola Scriptura, so we need an external source, so we can't arrive at that through fallible inference. Do you see why this guy's disgusting? Do you see why I can't tolerate people like this who think they're intelligent? You guys saw that, right? You see, Alan Rule, why people like this give your church a bad name? Because they think they're logical, intelligent. They know what they're talking about. But now let's take it a step further. Why did you arrive at the conclusion that your church is infallible and not the Orthodox Church? See, is this why I love Alan Rule? Because he just admits he's heard worse. He's even ashamed of his fellow Roman Catholic using such a stupid argument. Now, destination. You better answer my question directly. I'm going to bounce you. Why did you arrive at the Roman Catholic Church being infallible? And why did you accept its decree concerning the canon as being infallible when other apostolic churches 
that also claim apostolic succession and appeal to the fathers have a different list of books that are not completely identical to the Roman Catholic canon. In other words, the Orthodox Church accepts 3rd and 4th Maccabees as part of the Old Testament canon. They also accept Psalm 151, which Trent did not include in the canon. So how did you arrive that Trent is infallible, but the Orthodox Church is not because your fallible inference does not lead conclusively to Rome being infallible any more than your fallible inference would lead someone to assume the Orthodox Church is. So why should I arrive at the conclusion that Rome is infallible, not the Orthodox Church? Explain that to us. Because you're trying to attack Sola Scriptura to convince us we need your church. And I'm saying, no, you can keep your church. We're going the route of Orthodox. We're all going to be Orthodox. No, it does not have the historical pedigree. Let me embarrass you further. The Orthodox Church has the historical pedigree. Because the Orthodox Church is an apostolic church that claims apostolic succession and appeals to the church fathers. And they broke away from your church because your pope became corrupt. And also your church <clears throat> accepts the Philoke clause with the Orthodox Church condemns as an interpolation and addition. And notice Nada, she's Orthodox. She agreed with me. True. You just got buried. See, Nada just said exactly. Folks, here's an Orthodox sister agreeing with me that Destiny's Church has corrupted its way. Let's all become Orthodox. You see how stupid you look right now using that argument? I'm embarrassed for you. And if I was a Roman Catholic, I would beat you to repentance for even representing my church. You're a disgrace to your church. You're a joke. I apologize to the rest of the Roman Catholics. Al Rule, I apologize to you. Okay? Please don't take it personally. I just want to take a moment to embarrass this clown who had the audacity to use logic to try to refute Sola Scriptura. A logic just buried him and his argument deep into purgatory. And I hope people pray enough prayers to get you out sooner than later. Okay. Destiny, here's your final chance to answer me before I bounce you. The Orthodox Church, and Netta is an Orthodox sister who agreed with me. The Orthodox Church claims the same pedigree you do. Apostolic succession claims the church fathers and yet still says that your Roman bishop, the Bishop of Rome, corrupted himself that's why they broke, broke away from your bishop in 1054 because he assumed too much power and corrupted the pure apostolic doctrine such as <clears throat> confirming the Filioque clause in the Nicene Creed, a clause that wasn't there initially but added later. Why is the Orthodox Church wrong? They're using the same fallible inference you do, the same fathers, the same scripture, the same history to arrive at a different conclusion. Now, guys, notice that a verse says, exactly, Sam. So here's an Orthodox sister saying, I'm arguing exactly correctly the, the way Orthodox would. Why are they wrong, Destiny? Because now I'm going to muzzle you. I waste enough time on you. Quickly answer why the Orthodox is wrong. Don't ever be stupid enough to come in my comment section and use an argument that you think refutes Sola Scriptura. See, notice the straw man. Did I say that you said that you deny apostolic succession for the Eastern Orthodox? You see what kind of joke this guy is? I didn't say that. I said the Eastern Orthodox claims they maintain the pure understanding of the apostolic deposit of faith. Your church corrupted itself and made interpolations and deletions, and your corrupt bishop assumed too much power, which is why they broke away from your corrupt church. Why are they wrong? 
Final shot before I send you to purgatory. And I destroyed Muhammad and Muhammad's mother, who are now both burning in hell. Yeah. Yes, I don't understand what pedigree means. The Orthodox Christians who attack your church as a corrupt church don't understand what pedigree means because God had to wait until he created you to educate all of us simpletons. You're a joke. You're a clown, and you got exposed. Now send this guy to purgatory. Bounce this guy. Sorry, guys. Energies, did you understand my argument? Can you stop attacking straw man before I bounce you as well? I did not say the Roman Catholic Church does not acknowledge that the Eastern Orthodox Church has valid succession. The Orthodox Church also acknowledges that the Roman Church also has valid, valid apostolic succession. However, however, they believe that the Roman Catholic Church lost its way, corrupted the pure apostolic deposit of the faith, and the Pope assumed too much power, which is why they broke away. And until the bishop repents, they will not enter full communion with the Roman Catholic Church. Do you understand my argument? Stop attacking straw man. See, not a verse, guys. So you see, I'm not misrepresenting the Orthodox Church. Not a verse says exactly, Sam, 100%. Did you catch it? So I'm accurately representing the sentiments of the Orthodox Church. Exactly, Sam, 100%. So appealing to apostolic secession doesn't help you. Appealing to what you believe is your infallible magisterium doesn't help you because there are other apostolic traditions that don't think your pope is infallible or your church is infallible. Thank you. Bye-bye. See, not a verse, guys. Frame what she just said. Not a verse in Orthodox. The pope and papacy must...